Hello, this is You Mind Me Craft, and today I'm going to be continuing my series all about how to set up and maintain a Minecraft server. So today is episode two, and I will be showing you how to download and set up a bucket server. So just create a folder like I have here, and then you want to search bucket. Go to bucket.org, then click on get craft bucket. And it should redirect you to this page. Uh, and then you want to find what operating system you're on. And you want to click on Craft Bucket Recommended Build. This downloads the current recommended build, uh, which is stable. So while that downloads, I'm going to set up a bat file. You can do this by simply creating text document and then change this to whatever you want. I like to call it start. And then you want to change .txt to .bat. And then, okay. Um, now, if you do not see the .bat or file extensions like that, you simply click on View. Then this button by here, View again, and then you untick this. Normally that would be ticked. You need to untick that and then click Apply. Okay. And then you will see file extensions such as .bat. So once this is finished downloading, you simply drag that over. Uh, take off any things that are added on the end. Uh, what you also need to do is remove this end bit by here. So it just says craft bucket.char. Now what you want to find is if you uh, went to Windows, you need to copy this bit, Linux that bit, and Mac that bit. Uh, and you want to right click on your file, go edit, and then paste that information in there. So this is the name of the jar needs to be the same as the one in the folder and this is how much RAM is given to your server so if it's a bit laggy and you might want to up the RAM you just increase this number by here currently it's using one gigabyte which is equal to 1024 megabyte so you want to close that and save it now when you run the start.bat it will automatically start up your server here. so everything's been created as it was in the last server but obviously there's a bit more files what you will notice is there's three files this time instead of a single one now this is because the way bucket works is it separates each world out so each world has its own folder so this is the overworld nether and the end with normal minecraft servers this is all within one file the same as it is when you play in minecraft single player so Everything's the same except you have a bucket YML. Now this is some um, extra information and settings you get with bucket itself. Um, everything is pretty much self-explanatory in here. Um, it's very well changed. Now I will recommend getting something like Notepad++ when you start going into bucket stuff because it's a lot easier to change stuff as you go down, as you go through. So everything is pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, anything you don't really understand, I would recommend not touching it at all, because that'll just end up breaking stuff. Um, so yeah, um, there's different, different stuff like animals, limit the spawn limit, and stuff like that. You can all go through and edit if you wish. Uh, apart from that, you need the other file for configurating stuff is a server.properties, and this is exactly the same as the last one. So, when you get a plugin, you put, place it in this folder. I'll be covering how to do plugins in episode 4. Next episode, I will be saying all about how to port forward, and that means how to make your server reachable by other players. Because if you can just reach it by yourself, and only yourself, it's not really having a server, you should just um, have single player. So every time you wish to run this, you will need to use the start.bat. If you just run the craftbucket.jar itself, it won't actually work. So yeah, that sums up this video. Thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and share. And if you wish to watch any of the other videos, please click on the link in the description and you will be redirected to the playlist. So goodbye.